So in this video, I wanted to take a quick look at the new 2021 Parker 51 fountain pen. I think a lot of people knew this pen was coming and uh, kind of it was one of the more highly weighted pens of 2021, but it had been talked about it for some time. Uh, basically what happened was that Parker had their famous 51 fountain pen, the Parker 51, one of the most famous and collectible fountain pens of all time. And it had been rumored that a new one was coming. It was kind of in the works and then it got delayed or who knows what happened but finally it's, it became available immediately became back ordered and hard to get but now you could kind of find them uh comes in two versions basically a stainless steel nib which i bought and then a gold nib uh which i have not tried yet so just full disclosure there this model has a street price the steel model has a street price of about 87 dollars give or take and then the other one is about the gold model is about 250 that 250 I did the math, and it's about in line, you know, adjusting for inflation, of what a Parker 51 would have cost when it was initially put on sale, I think in like 1941 or so. So it may seem expensive, but maybe it's actually just in line with, uh, you know, adjusting for inflation. So I just wanted to do a quick look at the Parker 51 without any historical baggage, just looking at this as a 2021 pen release. Maybe that's not the way to look at it, but uh, if you're buying a 51 right now, maybe if you're just looking at it as a new fountain pen, which is how I came to it, not with a bunch of historic baggage, then uh, this will be the review, review, uh, sorry, review for you. If you want to kind of go through it with the history, the lens of history and all that, then uh, maybe this won't be very gratifying. Or you can check out the Unsharpened page for the full coverage. So here's the box. It's a nice gift box. It's quite heavy. Uh, fairly impressive and anytime you buy from the Parker 51 from an official retailer you'll get this there's not really anything inside you get just the gift box the pen was here comes with I believe two cartridges no converter I've one cartridge in here it's just a standard Parker cartridge though most of us have a bunch of those lying around uh, I didn't have any instructions that I could recall nothing like that and again definitely no converter here's the pen itself uh, we have that plastic body, you know, what do they call it? Precious, re precious resin or what? Just plastic body. Uh, I would say it's not as nice as the original. I have had a few Parker 51s and Parker 21s and all these. They used to use a kind of really high-end type. Maybe, maybe it's not high-end. Maybe just that's kind of old school plastic that had a real heavy sort of like Bakelite feel to it. Those days are over. Now you just get a kind of standard plastic. The clip looks similar to the original you see the arrow clip here uh, it's all metal that's kind of nice you see there is a jewel on top uh, and some parker 51s had a fancy jewel some didn't have it some had a double jewel you know which is a jewel over here too that whole thing has been simplified now it's just the stainless steel uh, version up here looks kind of nice just kind of a standard finial in that jewel shape so uh, pretty nice, but you know, not extraordinary. It looks like a Parker pen. Like here is a, uh, I don't know what this is. I don't know, this is a, some other Parker I had lying around that maybe is in like that $25 range. I mean, it's not an expensive pen. Uh, this is a, let me see what it says. Uh, it doesn't matter. This one, it's the same clip. It's kind of like not really any different. So the fact that the 51 is an $80 pen or a $250 pen. You know, not, it's not like Parker really blew the doors off of this thing. One of the major differences to me is that the 51 famously had a clutch on the inside and a pull cap. You just pull it off. I really like that. It's one of the, for me, one of the coolest features of the 51. That's no longer the case. Now it has screw, a screw cap. Generally, people tend to prefer screw caps and they associate them with nicer pens. Uh, but I can't tell you how many times I've tried to open this thing by pulling it. And uh, I'm not even like a Parker 51 geek. It's just like I've had a few of them. I've used them fairly extensively. And you pull them. They have a clutch inside that eventually wears out. And you have to fiddle with it. It's just kind of one of the things that you associate with this pen. That's not the case. You unscrew it. Inside, we see that traditional hooded nib. Uh, it looks a lot like the original. Of course, the original, at least the ones I've had, they had the uh, 14K nib, so you got used to a gold nib. Maybe it was 14, might have been 18K. But anyway, you had a gold nib. Now I have the stainless steel nib. 
I couldn't really justify spending $250 on this pen. You know, I don't think it's a bad idea if people did, but for me, it wasn't going to be a $250 pen, even if it had a fancy gold nib or whatever. We see the plastic here matches. I got this nice, uh, I don't even know what to call this. It's kind of like, it reminds me of the Lamy Petroleum, which is like a dark blue green. Uh, but I guess that's what I would call it. I think Parker might call it like Imperial Blue or something like that. Here's the threading. It's just plastic threading. Uh, not a big step up from the section, but I don't know. To me, the threading just looks really cheap. I wish they could have done something fancier instead of just kind of look like it carved in there. You see a little ring here, and that just reinforces this and prevents you from over-tightening this. But if you over-tighten here, you could crack the clip, uh, crack, the, crack the body, uh, which is obviously really bad. So this metal prevents that. Nothing here, no branding, nothing like that, which is which is fine. The original didn't have any branding or, or anything like that. And then just smooth plastic here. It's all one piece. So the barrel is like, the, the barrel here is just a really plain plastic barrel. Like here is a, I don't know what this is, it's like a $4 platinum preppy. And the barrel, it's just a plain plastic barrel. It's really not too different. This one obviously has a sticker on it and some printing, but it, if anything, the, the preppy feels like it's made of a heavier, nicer plastic. So um, it's a little bit confounding that Parker didn't think to make this resin thicker or heavier or, or whatever. Obviously it's a, I think it's a very cool color. It looks classy, but when you, when you hold it, it just feels like it's off any other pen, including a three or $4 platinum prep. So, uh, and then here is the inside of the pen. We have the pilot cartridge. Of course it uses, sorry, sorry, Parker cartridge, <laughs> not pilot. Parker cartridge uses the standard Parker cartridge. We see a bit of metal here to keep it all together, which is nice. And then, uh, that's kind of it. So the, the Parker 51 was, uh, famously used a few different uh, fill mechanisms, like, you know, and it didn't use a cartridge and it didn't use a converter. It used a kind of an arrow, like, uh, you know, like a squeeze adapter or the vacuumatic and these, these other like very famous, uh, converters, oh, sorry, like built in filled mechanisms. Those are gone. You could use this with a cartridge or you could use this with a converter. So I know a lot of people have, uh, you know, kind of taken, you know, review the pen poorly because they expected to see uh, a really nice original looking fill mechanism. Those are gone. Uh, if that's a problem for you, then this is not going to be a, a good pen for you. I'm fine with it using a cartridge converter. To me, that feels more modern. But again, I would have expected the price to come down because of it. Uh, I guess just from a branding standpoint, it wouldn't have been a good look for Parker to release the Parker 51 as a $35 pen or $40 pen. So maybe that wasn't possible, but I would have expected the price to come down. Size wise, it's pretty reasonable size. It's capped as one, two, three, four, five and a half inches. So right in your kind of standard size range. Let's use this preppy for comparison purposes again, as I think a lot of people have these. Almost exactly the same size. Let's pull off that cap. Let's screw this cap. Now you see that the uh, the Parker 51 is on the smaller side for pen. It's It's kind of skinny, has a taper down and it is one, two, three, four, hair over five inches, a little bit smaller than that preppy. Again, I don't wanna compare the two, I just happen to have a preppy at my desk and you could use them just for general comparison purposes. I mean, what else do I have? Here's like a, uh, a Moon Man M1 maybe, whatever they call this one, C1, M1, their names are very confusing, so. Pretty similar in size. The Moon Man is, uh, is like a thicker, wider pen, but uh, size-wise, length-wise, very similar. Okay, as far as writing goes, I've found this pen to be quite reliable. I think that's one of the nice things about moving to a screw cap. This thing really screws down nicely and you're creating a sealed, or you know, a sem essentially a sealed environment here. So the nib is less prone to drying out. I've had Parker 51s and they do tend to dry out when you're not using them. I mean, like if you don't use it for a day or two, they tend to dry out. It's hard to like blame the pen when you're using a 50 year old pen, even if it's been refurbished, it's a very old pen. So I tend not to like 
say the Parker 51 is a bad pen because it dries out, but I can say this new one has not dried out and it's been very reliable. Every time I pull this thing out, it's ready to go. I bought this in the medium size, so it kind of writes like an American medium, which is like, a, this isn't the best paper for this, but it is a, let's see if we could find something else. It is a, a broader medium. Again, I'm an American or European medium. So if you've used like a Lamy medium or something like that, then you'll get, or even a Waterman or Parker medium, obviously Parker's other fountain pens, you can see that. And this is just a standard Parker blue, which I really like. I think this is a, a good blue ink. I haven't tried the fine yet, and I don't think it's sold in an extra fine or, or, or broad or bold or whatever. I think it's really just being sold in the fine and medium right now. So reliable, relatively smooth. I don't have any smoothness problems with this. Uh, I think the feel is pretty true from what I remember from the Parker 51. It's got a little bit of bite to it and a little bit of feedback, but uh, smooth and reliable. You know, again, I haven't tried this in the 14K nib. It might be a little springier. It might be uh, a little smoother, hard to say. When you use a hooded nib like this, uh, you know, the nib, it doesn't touch this plastic, really. It doesn't really touch the body. It's not supposed to. It's more to protect the body and keep it from drying. But it's not a giant nib, so you don't get a lot of flex or not. I wouldn't say flex. I wouldn't, like, you won't get a lot of bounce from it. It's just not a springy nib. That's just how it never what the what the Parker 51 was. Uh, maybe by going with 14K, it is a little springier, but I doubt it. Uh, and from what I've read, it's, it's still a relatively stiff nib. So in that case, you're just doing it for aesthetics or for smoothness. So I don't really miss out on having purchased it in the, you know, I don't, I don't feel like I, I don't feel the need to get the 14K nib. We'll say that. So that's my, I mean, I guess not so quick at this point, review of the Parker 51, the 2021 edition. Uh, I think it's, it's cool that Parker did this. For me, I didn't have super high expectations. I think they did an okay job with it. I think they could have done a better job. I would have liked to see a higher end plastic sticking true to the uh, the pull on pull off cap. I think would have been nice for me. And then you know, kind of making the clip and the the jewel right here, the finial, whatever you want to call it, just a little higher end would have helped. You know, this is at the end of the day uh, a ninety dollar fountain pen that uh, you can only buy from you know dedicated Parker retailers. So it's the price will stay around ninety dollars. You're not going to see these selling for. $45 unless you buy them used. So it's it's going to be a consistently expensive pen and a pretty expensive acquisition. And unless you're buying it for historic purposes or you're a longtime Parker 51 fan, I kind of don't really see the value as being there, right? Separating the pen from its history, maybe that's impossible to do and maybe that's uh, not a very smart concept and just it's wrong on its face. But to me, when I try to separate this out from what it was, it just, I don't really see the value. This would be a nice you know, $35 or $4 pen, uh, but I really wouldn't go past that. And Parker has plenty of $35 and $40 pens. So, uh, you know, they're they're not drastically different than this pen. You know, this, again, I, I forget what Miles says. I'm sure the first person that watches this video will say like, oh yeah, it's a Parker 45 or whatever. But, you know, we see plastic body, push on cap, stainless steel nib, semi hooded nib is, is not drastically different. And I believe a lot of these pens are coming in a fair bit cheaper and maybe the 45 is not the right example but uh yeah for me the pen it's not super exciting it's cool to see from uh, historic purposes it's it's interesting but uh, i haven't really been picking this pen up as much as i had hoped i would so i would say not really a pen i'd recommend but a pretty cool release and a good gift for parker fans so thanks for watching